could feel beauty rising. Hi, my name is Sue Skaskia with Vermont Volunteer Services for Animals Humane Society and welcome to our show for the animals. Today we have a very sensitive and timely subject. It's with regard to Green Mountain College and their decision to slaughter Bill and Lou, uh, two oxen that have been with the college for 11 years. They're a very bonded pair. Um, they've had, one has had an accident and the college has made the decision to have them slaughtered. With us today is Miriam Jones and Patrice Jones. They are the co-founders of Vine Sanctuary in Springfield, Vermont. Vine has offered to provide a retirement home for Bill and Lou, the two oxen at Green Mountain College. Green Mountain College, by the way, is uh, located in Poultney, Vermont. Their offer was refused and here we are today. Thank you very much for working on this issue and coming up and talking about it. Oh, thanks for having us. Yes, yeah. I do know it's a time-sensitive issue. I know there are a lot of things going on about this. Um, it seems to have taken on a life of its own in the effort to rescue these two animals. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, how did this all happen and how did you both become involved? Well, uh, after the college made the decision to slaughter uh, its mascots and serve them in the cafeteria. Uh, uh, some alumni and students were upset. Uh, one or more of them contacted Green Mountain Animal Defenders, which is an animal advocacy organization that includes many Green Mountain College alum. Mm -hmm. uh, and they contacted us. We thought, uh, well, we have the answer to this question. Uh, we can uh, offer a retirement home. Uh, we know that the college had been concerned about continuing to feed Bill and Lou if they couldn't work. Uh, and we knew that they'd made the decision not knowing there was a nearby sanctuary that could take them. So we called the sanctuary, uh, called the college, mm -hmm. offered sanctuary, thinking that this would solve the problem for everybody. Right. Instead, we were fairly rudely refused. Who did you speak with? Um, we spoke with the farm manager, um, and I had a lengthy conversation with him, actually. And uh, the, the one reason after another was presented as to why they had to kill Bill and Lou. Um, and so I uh, asked who makes the decisions on campus. I was told repeatedly that this was a group effort, that everybody decided this, this matter, and it had been decided some time everybody, ago. That everybody. That big, mysterious everybody. So I, I said, well, I, I doubt tuition increases are thrown up to the everybody, but who, when push comes to shove, tell me who makes the call. And he told me it was the provost, and I said, thank you very much. And, and, and that's, that's, that was what sparked the outcry that we have today. Okay, so what are their reasons? What reasons did they give you? Well, we've heard lots of different we reasons. Have. And, and, and um, sometimes these reasons uh, contradict each other. Sometimes they contradict the facts. I don't think anyone's being um, deliberately dishonest in any way, uh, but it is a little bit hard uh, to answer when it just seems like no matter what anybody says, they come up with some reason why they need to kill these animals. Mm -hmm. Right, right. We were given the economic reason, um, but several people have offered substantial sums of money. What I had heard mm -hmm. is that 6600 had initially been offered for them. That was one offer. We, we haven't offered money, but that was one offer. Mm -hmm. um, all offers have been refused, and in fact, one statement from the school said, it doesn't matter how much you offer, we are not selling them. This is not about money. Although, of course, originally it, it was partly about money. Or at least that's what we were told. We exactly. Don't, we don't want to make any presumptions about what people were thinking there. We can only go on what was said to us. The, the next thing that was said to us after the economic argument uh, was that it was necessary to kill Bill and Lou in order to be consistent with their environmental ethic of sustainability. Ethic. That's correct. Um, it's a funny word to use. <laughs> well, many environmental ethicists have since written to the college telling them uh, that this is not reasoning that is usually used in the field of environmental ethics. But what they were saying at that point to us uh, and to the world at this point, because they were posting it on uh, their Facebook page, was mm -hmm. that um, Bill and Lou are no longer useful. 
uh, and so they should no longer be allowed to consume resources. Um, That's, that line of thinking is bizarre. Well, uh, many it, people agree. With and or, 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 or morally reprehensible. Um, it, it, see, to me, it, it, if it's not okay for farmed animals to consume resources, then you don't breed or buy farmed animals. You're not in the business of animal agriculture. Um, but to say that it was okay for them to consume resources while they were serving the school and then now suddenly it's not okay, uh, that to me uh, is illogical as well as morally reprehensible. Hmm. It, and you notice that neither of those two arguments had anything to do with what's good for Bill and Lou. Um, uh, uh, but then we did start to hear after the outcry arguments that it would be best for Bill and Lou uh, uh, to, to, to be... To, to be, be slaughtered? Be. Right. Did Bill... <laughs> <laughs> and we, right, we, did Bill and Lou have a choice in this? Uh, a absolutely not. And, and of course, the, the reality is they have no choice whether the outcome is good or bad. And, and that's a whole other, other ethical question. But in <coughs> fact, um, we did not hear those arguments until the other two arguments were essentially demolished um, or rendered, rendered useless. What we this need is to not do to say that nobody at Green Mountain College was thinking of them. I understand that some people at Green Mountain College may feel demonized at this point. They, they, there are about 600 people on that campus, and then they've now heard from more than 70,000 people worldwide. Really? Uh, at, least. at least. Well, this seems like a public um, and, relation and, 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 nightmare for them. Yeah. So I, I'm sure that some people there were thinking about what was right for Bill and Lou. Um, our feeling is that they were acting on bad information. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, the farm program there, uh, from what we're hearing from alumni, is very different now than it used to be. And in recent years, under the tenure of the farm manager who refused the offer when we called, um, uh, some things have changed. Uh, and uh, there's been this uh, use of 17th and 18th century techniques, the, uh, the yoking of the oxen with the heavy wooden yokes, the use of the buggy whip, the making the oxen generate electricity. These are, these are technologies um, that are not necessarily consistent with 21st century animal welfare. Well, I've heard standards. of complaints, rumors of complaints of animal cruelty at Green Mountain College. There, there have been some early on in this in this um, situation. A neighbor of the school, very publicly, and in fact, she sent a letter to the Rutland Herald stating this, said that over the years she has noticed poor treatment of Bill and Lou and has, in her words, bitten her tongue. Um, we did not solicit any any of these comments. Um, mm -hmm. Another person said that when when the school had a sheep program, and I honestly don't know if it was a wool program or a meat program, there was, there was a complaint lodged against the school about animal cruelty. So and, and these are things we've all heard about. Um, there are other others. Nothing has, we haven't investigated, we haven't, um, but n neither have we solicited these, these comments. One thing I would like I, to I, talk I wanted about. To just, if I could just finish. Okay. The, I went off on a tangent. But, uh, so, the, so there have been these techniques and the, 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 the catching groundhogs in, in, in cages and, and dropping them in the river to drown was another thing that uh, someone uh, wrote about. But, but my, my, my point is that the students and the faculty the liberal arts faculty at the, this liberal arts college are, are not, for the most part, farm people. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't necessarily grow up on farms. They don't necessarily have an agricultural background. And so when they went to make this decision about Bill and Lou, they were relying on information provided to them by this farm manager, mm -hmm. the man who thought of the idea of killing them, the man who for the past 10 years has been yoking them and making them work. And he was their one source of information. And the college has essentially choked off all other sources of information. So the students really aren't able to hear from animal welfare professionals what would be good for Bill and Lou. I know many students are very concerned with what would be good for Bill and Lou. But the college hasn't allowed them to hear from the people who could tell them that. One thing that we need to talk about is what happened, what brought us to this point. Bill and Lou are two oxen. Correct me when mm -hmm. I get off track. Mm -hmm. 
They're 11 years old. Mm -hmm. They have worked together as a team. Mm -hmm. And one of them, is it Bill or Lou? Lou. Lou. Lou stepped into a groundhog hole mm -hmm. and injured his foot. He's unable to pull now. Mm -hmm. They tried to put another oxen with the Bill. other one, uh -huh. and it was not accepted. Right. So because of that, they're going to kill the both of them. Correct. Okay. Correct. And this really resonates with people on so many levels. It resonates with people who, who know what it is to have chronic pain, but don't necessarily want to commit suicide over that. It resonates with people who've lost a loved one, but they really don't necessarily want to die even though they're, they're grief-stricken. Um, it resonates with people who've worked very hard all their lives and then say, oh, well, society has no more use for me. I guess I might as well become Soylent Green now. You know? mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many levels on, on which this, this is getting people and a huge cross-section of, of society. Farmers, hunters, ranchers, animal rights people, animal welfare people, just random people who... who who are struck by the injustice of this. And um, really, at this point, I think we, we're hearing from people from Australia, from Canada, from, and, and while I understand that Vermont um, tends to look at what happens in Vermont perhaps more closely <laughs> than, than what happens elsewhere, there's a, quite a bit of outcry in Vermont as well. I have tried uh, calling Green Mountain College to speak with the president directly in preparation for this show, and his name is Paul Fontaine. Correct. F-O-N-T-E-Y-N. He's the president and CEO of Green Mountain College and also a professor of biology. He refused to return my calls. Um, I did send an email after a phone call, and I called several board of trustee members. And I did receive a call back, or rather an email, from Anthony Cortez, who is president and co-founder of Second Nature. Um, and I'd just briefly like to read his response. I asked him to be on the show today to represent the side. Um, thank you, Ms. Gaskew, for your request. I do not wish to participate in the program. The decision you refer to is one of the president of Green Mountain College, which I fully support. He is the spokesman for the college. Sincerely, Anthony D. Cortez, trustee. I wrote back to him and asked him, thanked him for his reply, and asked if I could, if he could please give me the reason that he concurs with Mr. Fontaine's decision. And would you please help me to understand the situation so that we can present a fair representation of the issue? In advance, I thanked him for his time. I have not heard back. We talked earlier bef before the show about the responsibility of a college, right. how it should empower its students to communicate, to think beyond what they're just told. You and I were talking about that. Yeah, um, uh, uh, and, and I want to say that I really appreciate Green Mountain's college's uh, uh, willingness to consult students in important decisions. Um, that part of what they've done here uh, is problematic only because they were asking students, some of them teenagers still, uh, to make a life or death decision on the basis of bad information and then blocking off sources of external information. And so they're saying that they're empowering the students, but I don't think it empowers students to first of all put them in the fairly psychologically devastating position of having to make a, a, an actual life or death decision uh, where some beings are actually going to be killed if you say so. Um, I, I'm, I, I've been a college teacher and I know that, that research ethics don't even allow you to put research subjects in that kind of a stressful situation where they make a life or death decision. Mm -hmm. So I'm very concerned about asking teenagers to make that decision. And then the idea that you would block off the college from sources of information. You haven't heard back from no. President Fontaine. We haven't heard back from President Fontaine. He's hiding. Have, He's hiding. <laughs> uh, everyone should know that, that we have written conciliatory letters. We have made it clear that we not only reiterate our willingness to care for Bill and Lou, uh, we have the resources to call upon the best veterinary care uh, for Lou, 
uh, to have animal welfare professionals decide uh, what's helpful, uh, what, whether or not his condition can be treated, uh, to offer the two of them a lifelong home. We've also said that we would be delighted to help the college rescue its reputation after this and to say how wonderful they are. Uh, uh, but we get no reply at all. It's as though we haven't even spoken. And I, I'd like to extend that a little bit. And, and I will preface this by saying I speak in shorthand a lot. So when I talk about the school, I completely agree. Every single individual at that school is not of a like mind. Or, or else that would be kind of a cult. So um, we're not. So when I say the school, I'm speaking of of this this conflict that we're talking. And there there are two sides to this conflict, and and that's what I'm speaking of. So the school has has essentially circled its wagons on all fronts, definitely on an academic basis. So so scholars of uh, environmental ethics, animal studies you name it, have, have tried and for the most part failed to engage their colleagues at that school in a dialogue about this issue. Random individuals, and I mean, by random I mean people like me who are, you know, just living their lives, are not academics necessarily, have tried calling to voice their opinion. They are literally, and I mean literally, hung up upon by the receptionist more times than not. You want to talk about this issue? Goodbye. You want to talk about this issue? Goodbye. Um, there's so many levels on which the, 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 this battening down the hatches is happening, and I, I couldn't help but remember when I was about college age, the big issue at that time on the college campuses was divestments from South Africa. And I remember very clearly how heated that struggle was. But there were two differences here. One difference is there was a struggle. There was a back and forth going on. Mm -hmm. And the second difference is that the college listened. The colleges and universities listened because they knew full well, not because they cared after they listened. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't. But, but they understood that the public outcry, they are part of the community. They are a part of the world in which they operate. And when the critical mass of people say, we aren't happy with this, as a member of that community, you need to reconsider your decision. The arrogance of the college, as well as the board of trustees, is what frustrates me well, in I, this. I, yeah, and I, and I again, I, I, I wonder if it's, if it's um, a misguided uh, way of supporting the president. I think a lot of things could be going on. We literally don't know because we cannot even have a conversation. We're not monsters. We're not out to vilify the school. We never have been. And, and we've been flummoxed and perplexed this whole time at our inability to actually have a conversation. And so the, the problem when you batten down the hatches is that people start wondering why. And the rumors start flying, and that's when the problems start. We're not here to start rumors, but we are here to say we don't understand what this is about. I've and we would like to be able to engage in a dialogue about this. And, and uh, ideally, we'd like to engage with the board about this. And yes, it's the president's decision, but they hired the president. And so we would like to speak with them about this issue. I'd be happy to hear back from the president. I wrote Absolutely. the president a lengthy letter as a scholar outlining my concerns. And, uh, and also speaking for the sanctuary, making certain offers. And, and we've not heard back. Nor have, um, nor have we. Uh, and, yeah. And, yeah. and people who disagree can work together on things. Miriam and I disagree about whether that um, um, divestment analogy is a good one. I don't think it's a good <laughs> analogy. Um, but but, 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 we'll but, but <laughs> we can work together um, on saving Bill and Lou. Uh, the, the, the college president and I probably don't agree about many things. But we could have a dialogue and we mm -hmm. could come to a decision about what's best for Bill and Lou because it does sound like one change that has happened now is we are now hearing the preponderance of students talking about what is or isn't best for Bill and Lou. Mm -hmm. And so we would like as local animal welfare professionals to be part of that dialogue. Mm -hmm. uh, and we continue to offer to the college a solution to their problem. And right. that's a permanent retirement home for Bill and Lou, free of charge to the college with the top quality veterinary care. Okay, let me, let me interrupt. Okay, I, I'm, and 
and with the assurance that we will not use Bill and Lou in the future in any way to vilify the school. And we've offered that to the board that we would sign something to that effect. I've heard different things where the cows, uh, the oxen were going to be served to the students. Yes. And that was one of the points. Absolutely. And then they somebody said, do what do you mean you're going to serve 11 year old meat? Yeah. yeah. So, you know. <laughs> this is another example many of. Many people of, are asking that question. This is another example of something that the students can't possibly know about because of their own backgrounds. And so when we go to the feed store, we hear older um, farmers mm -hmm. saying, who eats 11-year-old oxen meat? So the students don't even realize that they voted to eat something that is probably going to be nearly inedible to them. Or just being killed to be fertilized. Wasted. Right. But, you know, I, I, exactly. I can't, if they think they're going to eat two tons of 11-year-old um, of oxen meat, I... Tell me, what, would, what should supporters of Bill and Lou do today to help save their lives? Well, um, s certainly pr pressure is, is important to keep up. Um, media pressure in particular, if people can get letters to the editor and to the papers, if they can ask their uh, local TV stations to cover this, this sort of venue, anything is critical because, because that's, it's important to, to tell the school that this message continues to be important. This situation continues to be critical to a huge number of people. There are people out there who are planning protests, they're planning vigils, they're planning other actions, people who are not us. And I want to be very clear about that. Vine Sanctuary has been clear that we, we are here to provide them a home. We're certainly here to add our voices to the debate. We're not planning those things. We have no control over 100,000 people. So, and anyone can go on Facebook and find out certain things. So, and, so. The, and also the beauty of this show, it's played on all the public access stations in Vermont weekly, regularly, and we now have the ability to be picked up by any public access station across the United States. That's exciting. And yeah. it is very exciting. Also, Facebook is a wonderful and, way. And, and it is, it is. Folks shouldn't not call just because they're hanging up on people. Yes. Well, I'd like and to give that number. It's 802-287. 8310, and do you think the best would be to ask for the farm manager or the college, or for both, the college the president, president? The president. So you want to ask for President yeah. Paul Fontaine, and perhaps you don't want to say what you're calling about <laughs> <laughs> to avoid getting hung up on. Um, That's a good point. <laughs> and I, if they kill Bill and Lou, that, that doesn't mean that you should not tell them what you think. Mm -hmm. right. um, I think that they maybe have the idea that this goes away right. once they kill them, um, but uh, I think that that's not going to be the case. I think they're underestimating the, the tenacity of people who love animals. Yeah, so, uh, uh, truly. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, all along we've 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 tried. Uh, when people have contacted us, we're very upset, uh, saying, well, "What can we do?" And we've said, "Please be nice. Please contact the the, the school. Um, please don't do anything crazy. Um, <laughs> please be respectful." But you know, people are going to do what they're going to do. A lot of people are really upset about yeah. this. Um, people are calling us crying. Yeah, they uh, they're so yeah. upset about this, um, and I don't think that, that, that this magically goes away. Well, it definitely is a public relations nightmare for the college, and if they aren't smart enough to recognize that, even to step back and say, whoa, I made, we made an error in judgment. Even for the, in the best interest of the college, this president and the board of trustees have to be responsible to s financially this could be a very big hit on the school. Am I incorrect? You are not incorrect. And in fact, we've heard, and again, you know, heard or not heard, but we've heard people say things like, I wouldn't send my kid to that school if that, uh, frankly, if that's the kind of meat they're serving. Um, I'm not sending my kid to that school if, if this is how they teach compassion. I don't know. This is not what my idea of a reputable college is. And, and there, there are those concerns. And, and again, this is not 
us saying what the school should or should not do with this sort of public relations issue. But um, as I know that I know that um, there are definitely other ways to handle this, and, and, and we're ready to and happy to handle those, work on those ways with the school. But one way oh, that, they, that, that the president could make this go away mm -hmm. would be to simply grant clemency to Bill and Lou. He doesn't even have to say that the decision to kill them was wrong. He can, in the same way that a governor uh, gives clemency to a condemned um, person, say, I personally will send them to sanctuary. He can do that without saying that the original decision was wrong if he wanted a face-saving way out of this. I personally would not send my children to school, thankfully mine have already graduated, um, to a college that refuses to communicate. That to me is very scary. And I think that speaks volumes about Green Mountain College itself. It's, it's, for me, that's uh, the scariest point. Oh, honestly, I, we had visitors here yesterday, um, friends, and one of them's from Israel, and he's lived in all the major cities in the country, and I, I mean all of them. And when he heard that the school was literally hanging up on people who were trying to call, he said, and this is a college? Mm -hmm. People don't believe that's true, and that's why I keep saying it's literally true. I'm not being figurative. This kind of response to the public outcry is not conducive to the reputation of a school that is interested in developing and cultivating um, a growing relationship with the community in which it lives. And, and you know, in this day and age, that community is the whole world. Like it or not, That's right. we're wired here. And so when people say, well, I don't care what people in Australia think, well, you, you have to care. Or else, or else you don't need the internet at your school. If, okay. yeah. if you're a scholar, you should care you have what to care. scholars exactly. in Australia care. This, Say. That's mm -hmm. right. Well, and I've Minnesota and New York and all. I mean, yeah. I've left messages for but seven of the trustees, mm -hmm. and I've only heard back from one. And unfortunately, I have to wrap this up at this point. Uh, can we just not? Uh, let's not denigrate the whole college. And we're uh, not. We're uh, not. Because of this one incident, I think that what's happened here is a, a bad decision based on bad information. Uh, uh, good people with bad information can add up to a bad decision and then uh, 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 as a psychologist I understand very well how groupthink and the confirmation bias can lead people to hunker down on a bad mm -hmm. decision. That doesn't mean that the school itself is uh, 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 bad and wrong um, and it can step back from this and be the school that it wants to be. Okay, and on that, I'm sorry, we're out of time. Thank you very, very much for coming. Thank and you it's something that we will definitely keep our eyes on and report back. Yeah, hope for the best and we'll keep thank fighting. Thank you. And we'll get that telephone number up to call Green Mountain College. And thank you very much for watching For the Animals.